Hi, I'm Dave Alexander, goaltending coach for the Syracuse Crunch of the American Hockey League. Today, we're here to talk to you again about goaltending. Goaltenders are on the receiving end of one of the fastest games on the planet, and our job is very simple, to stop the puck. And to do so, many people assume we're protecting 24 square feet of net, a six by four frame. But the really good goaltenders understand the math and science behind the position. And with this, we know that if we can achieve the proper angle, squareness, and depth combined with a good stance, we can actually manipulate the space behind us to make a smaller space around us, making our job much easier. Let's take a look at what happens. So to understand this concept of having space behind us in relation to the space around us, I'm gonna use these really long dog leashes that I bought in Sweden years ago, and I need a goaltender. So what we're gonna do is we need to understand that the only time the space is 24 square feet is actually when the net is empty. Once we put a goaltender in there, everything changes. Ready to go? I told you these dog leashes were long. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is talk about the three parts of a goaltender's position. They are the angle, squareness, and depth. As we can see right now, if I was shooting the puck from this location on the blue line, our goaltender has none of those three. But what we're gonna do is ask our goaltender to get on angle first. So go ahead, move over on angle with this puck, please. So as you can see, our goaltender now is on angle, but his squareness is off. I'm gonna ask him to square up to the shooter, please. Now we have angle and squareness, and lastly, he'll add some depth. Come on out a bit. Perfect. Now our goaltender has the three elements of positioning required for this shot. The angle, squareness, and depth. Now that we understand what the three positional elements are for a goalie's position, we can move forward with today's lesson. We've talked about the goaltender's angle, his squareness, and his depth. And once the goaltender has these positional elements in, he's ready to take a stance to help manipulate the space around him. Right now we have our goaltender in a basic stance. Let's drop him into a butterfly stance. Now that we have the goaltender's position combined with the stance, we're less worried about the net behind him and more concerned about the new space that he has created around him. And we're gonna take a look at what this means now. Our goaltender has created a much smaller area to protect. We can use these dog leashes as our new crossbar. So, if I lie my stick across these leashes, we begin to learn that the crossbar is now, in effect, much lower than the one behind him. If the shooter were to shoot from the bottom hash mark where the puck is located right now, and it goes anywhere above our Crunch logo, that puck is actually gonna go above the net. Now to think about this concept with our last lesson in goaltending, I'm five foot seven. The camera is currently sitting at five foot seven as well. Look at how much net you might see as a shooter at five foot seven compared to the reality of what the puck sees. So he has created a much smaller space vertically around him. But also we're gonna push new posts into play and these posts will illustrate how much more narrow it is because of this positioning and stance. So now in line with our goaltender's hip bones, or as best I can, I'm gonna push these imaginary posts in to illustrate how much more narrow the net actually is. So now that we see what the shooter might see from his vantage point or lens, let's drop our camera lens down to ice level to see what's actually happening with the space around our goalie. So from the puck's vantage point, we start to see that the space around our goaltender is very small. And again, this is all due to his positioning and stance that he has chosen. You can see here, there's very little room around him to put the puck in the net and very little room to put the puck up high into the net. Let's remove the, the, uh, the ropes and I'll do some shooting to see if I can score. Okay, so here I go. I'm gonna use with what I see and I'm gonna put this puck right by his shoulder to go into the top corner. Ready, Goody? The next thing I'll illustrate is anything that goes out wide of this post is actually gonna go wider than that, even though I see a small hole there. Ready? So understanding the space around the goaltender, my goalie, since he knows about all this, 
realizes that he doesn't have to move very much to make a save. I'm gonna aim for the top corner, which is just off the head of the Crunch logo, and inside the new post we've created. My goalie is simply gonna shift his shoulders and use a quick small movement of the elbow to stop the puck. Ready? Now that we understand all of these concepts, it's really important to know that even the smaller goaltenders can still play the game. The trend is moving towards big goaltenders across all levels of hockey. But as a goaltender, if you can understand and really hone those positional elements of your game combined with great skating, you can create a space around you that is very small to play in. And that's why even small goaltenders today can still play the game as well. So as you can see from this simple demonstration, once a goaltender takes his position and his stance, he learns to manipulate the space around him to make his life easier. That's why some of the game's best goaltenders look like they're barely moving. It's because they understand this concept, like our goaltender here. All right, we're done for the day. That's enough.